What's up guys? Justin here with thecgessentials.com. So in today's video, we're going to talk about how to use the triangulate modifier in Blender and why you would want it. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so the Blender triangulate modifier is basically a tool for converting all of the faces in a mesh to triangular faces. So as you know, we kind of try to target modeling with quad geometry whenever we can inside of Blender. Um, so that makes a lot of things work a lot better, like the UV mapping and other things like that. However, and let's jump back into Blender real quick. Um, there's an issue with this, which is when you start exporting these to external programs, this can be a little bit problematic because a lot of those programs convert things to tries. So let's say that we were to apply the triangulate modifier to this Suzanne model right here. So I'm just gonna add a triangulate modifier. Notice how what that does is it takes all of the quads that are in here and it converts them to tries. So notice how, for example, this box right here is four-sided over here, but it splits this up over here so that these are made of triangular shapes. And so we can adjust the way that the quads are placed in here, which we can look at in a second. And so what that's doing is that's uh, converting all of these to triangular shapes. Now, why would you wanna do this? So the reason you'd wanna do this is because a lot of programs, um, game engines and other things like that, work with tri geometry. So whenever you export something to a game engine, it's going to convert everything to tri geometry anyway. So let's say, for example, that we were to add like a cube real quick. So I'm just gonna create a cube and I'm just gonna use it to make a wall. And so let's say I had a simple piece of geometry like this, right? It's basically just a wall that I used a Boolean to cut a hole in. Well, right now, this isn't really quad geometry or really any kind of geometry. These are just ingons, right? So that means an ingon is a shape that has more than four sides on it. So if you look at this face, for example, it's got like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like eight sides on it, something like that. Um, well, what would happen is if we were to export this to a program like Unity, it's going to convert this to tries. So what I wanna do real quick is let's just apply this modifier um, to both of these. So I'm just going to apply this and I'm going to apply this. Then we can get rid of these cubes. And on one of these, I'm going to apply a triangulate modifier like this. So for this one, I've created or I've triangulated this geometry. And so we'll go ahead and apply this to this geometry. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this into Unity real quick so we can take a look at what the topology looks like. All right, so this is what those walls look like when I bring them into Unity. And remember that the one on the left didn't have the modifier applied to it, the one on the right did. However, if I turn on a shaded wireframe mode so that I can look at the topology in here, notice how for both of these objects, they're being shown as tri-geometry inside of Unity. And notice how the topology is slightly different on each one. So the one on the right, remember we applied our own triangulate modifier in here to create this triangular topology. So what we've got is we've got this topology in here that we dictated. Over here, notice how the triangulate geometry is moving a little bit different. So this one, for example, instead of going to this corner right here, it's now going from this top corner all the way down to the bottom, which may or may not be okay, but this one we actually controlled the topology where this one we didn't. And so notice how this is doing an auto conversion from quads or from ingons or from whatever you send over to tries. But that auto conversion doesn't always work. And as your geometry gets more complicated, sometimes you get like weird pinching and other things like that. All right, and so real quick, let's take a look at these options right here. And then I'll show you another situation where it makes a lot of sense to use the triangulate modifier. So basically what this modifier is doing with the options over here is it gives you different methods for how you can can generate your surfaces. So basically these drop downs give you the ability to dictate the way that the quads are created. So notice how when I drop this down, there's options for beauty and fixed and fixed alternate. And basically those are just different ways that this is going to calculate this. So beauty is going to try to make these look as good as possible. Um, it's gonna be a little bit slower on your more complex models. Fixed and fixed alternates are going to either split these on their first and third or the second and fourth vertices that are in here. So notice how the directions just switch on that. And then the shortest diagonal and longest diagonal are gonna do exactly what it sounds like. Um, the shortest diagonal is going to try to find the shortest diagonal. Um, the longest is going to find the longest. Of, of all of the ones, at least on this Suzanne model, I'm not liking the longest as much. Usually I'm just using the beauty in this situation. But notice how in addition, you can also use this to split up other things as well. So let's say I was to apply a triangulate modifier 
modifier here. So notice how the first one is going to be your quad method, right? It's setting how you split up four-sided objects. Well, the second one is going to set how you split up your n-gons. So this circle on the top is an n-gon. And so notice how you can either pick the clip option, which is going to go a different direction, or the beauty method right here. So you can pick one of the two ways in here that this is going to do this. And notice how you can also set this to a number of minimum vertices. So let's say I didn't want the quad geometry to be split up into tries. I could just set my minimum vertices right here, and it's just going to triangulate the top of your mesh. So there's a few places where that might be valuable, but that's going to give you control over the way this works. So the keep normals will try to preserve any custom normals that you have in here. So leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions. I will link to some other modifier tutorials on this page. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.